Hi guys, it's Geekonomics here, bringing you the final figures for A593 GCSE stimulus material. So let's get to it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the last two figures, that's figures 12 and 13. What we're looking at here, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at the whole issue of FDI on the one hand, so that's in figure 12, foreign direct investment. And then figure 13, we're looking at the whole cost-benefit situation with regard to MNCs, which you will very well know, I'm sure, are multinational companies. Now, before we get stuck into this extract data, let's just say one or two things about figure 12 and figure 13. They are the last two figures in the stimulus material. That means it is more than likely, ladies and gentlemen, that your final essay question, so the big heavyweight, the 12 marker, will be assessed based primarily upon, but not exclusively, but primarily upon figures 12 and 13. Do remember, ladies and gentlemen, it's very important in this, when you're writing your answer to this particular essay question, try and draw in elements from the other figures, so figures 1 through to 11. See if you can incorporate those into your answer here, because more than likely, 99% likely, you will be asked in the question with reference to the extract data, and you'll be expected. And it's so important. I cannot stress how important that is, ladies and gentlemen, but you must refer to other elements of the data when you're writing your answer to this particular question. Nota benesto here, ladies and gentlemen, refer to the data. Okay, so it's most likely to be the essay question, the 12 marker. Can I, just by way of a reference for you, I'm not going to go through this here, but if you want a little bit more help as to how you should structure your answer to an essay question, um, can I refer you to this, Maximise Your Marks and the Extended Answer Questions, one of my previous videos. Have a look there. Now this is primarily for A-level essay structure, but to be honest, the structure for GCSE is just the same. And this is why it's so good to get into these habits early on in your economics careers. So have a look at that and that will give you a little bit more guidance as to how you should structure your answer to this style of question in order that you can optimise your marks when answering this particular question. Okay, ladies and gents, some of the questions which I have, um, uh, I think that you should consider here would be the following. Define the term FDI. Define the term globalisation. Define the term multinational corporation. Give an example of a multinational corporation. Explain the impact of foreign direct investment on a country's current account. Now you'll know that the current account, have we talked about this in previous uh, figures maybe? Um, made up of four separate components. So we have trade and goods. Oh, we have, yes, of course we've covered this before. Trade and goods, trade and services, primary income, secondary income. Primary income, we mean the income flows from abroad, so those net flows. Um, Foreign-owned companies, multinational corporations located in this country, the incomes flow out. And obviously UK companies abroad, the incomes flow back. And we have a net flow there. Take one from the other and you get the net flow. State and explain two benefits to China of being the largest recipient of FDI. Now that really is all, it's almost written for you in figure 13 because it identifies for you a whole list of advantages of FDI. State and explain two costs. Again, figure 13 does this for you almost. Um, it's, I used to think that this last essay question was something maybe to be a little bit frightened of, a little bit wary of, but there's so much detail, especially in figure 13, if you can just put that all together in lovely, comprehensive prose, you should do really well in this essay. Explain the reasons why rapidly growing developing economies are more likely to be listed in the top 10 FDI recipients. Analyze the reasons for Asian countries significantly increasing their role in global FDI, becoming wealthier, surplus cash to spend, 
Therefore, what else might they do with it? Well, they might as well get a return by investing it overseas. Discuss whether multinational corporations are always an advantage to developing economies. And then lastly, using information in the case study and your own knowledge of economics, evaluate the role of multinational companies in globalisation. So I think this last question is likely to be, ladies and gentlemen, the 12 mark question. And so in your preparation for this exam in a number of weeks, look to build an answer, look to build a writing frame for this question 11. And I think if you do that, you'll not go too far wrong. And remember, as I've said three times already, using the information in the case study, so important. Okay, let's have a little look at the information in this particular case study. So let's scroll back here to figure 12. So here we've got uh, the top 10 countries receiving FDI, and we've got the top 10, 10 countries providing FDI. Um, it, the thing about this data is, ladies and gentlemen, I have sought clarification on this from Elizabeth Ring, who is the subject specialist from the exam board, and I have an email to, um, to back this up and to reinforce what I'm going to say to you. It says here, of the top 10 FDI recipients, five are developing economies. Now, you'll be familiar, obviously, with the acronym BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. But if you go through this and you look for those sort of developing nations, we've got China, so that's one. Uh, we've got Brazil, that's two. We've got India, that's three. So I queried this with the exam board and I said, well, where are you getting this five from? Where are you getting it from? And so I was sent an email with some data and the data classified some of these other countries also as developing countries, ladies and gentlemen. So let me just show you which countries we're talking about here. So countries classed as developing in this particular data set are these ones which you'll be familiar with, obviously, Brazil, Russia, India, China, but Hong Kong and Singapore also uh, classed in this data set and for the purposes of your analysis also being classed here as developing economies. So do bear that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, because if you try and find the sort of traditional BRICS countries, they're obviously not all there. So do uh, bear that in mind. So what, what is there to say about this data? Well, we, there's a few things to say. First of all, obviously some of the countries are receiving, so if you think of China, but on the one hand, but on the other hand, they're also doling out money as well. They're all, they're, because they are cash rich, especially a country like China, export led growth, enormous surplus cash floating around. What does it do with it? Invest it abroad in order to get a return. Um, indeed, invest it in US dollars primarily in the case of China. 129 received, 116 out. So a net recipient to the tune of plus 13 for China. But obviously look for others where that isn't the case. So if we consider Hong Kong here, for example, 103 billion US dollars in, 143 billion US dollars out. So a net contributor of FDI to the tune of 40 billion US dollars. So do, do be wary of that and do go through, I would suggest to you that you go through each of these and try to calculate what the net flow is for each of the countries. I think it's also worth just considering how much this money actually equates to the overall size of these economies. So if you think about, for example, the UK economy in receipt of 72 billion US dollars. Now on the face of that, 72 billion, you think, wow, if I had 72 billion, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? However, when it's in the context of our economy, which is worth 1.6, 1.7 trillion, then it's small fry, isn't it? When you think of the Chinese economy, um, where we're knocking on for maybe 18 trillion US dollars, then 129 billion in the grand scheme of things, it's not really that significant. So do, do weigh that up and do measure that up, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of the, the size of these relative to the overall values of the economies, because that that's an important factor. Some of these countries you'll find will be 
uh, much more heavily dependent and more reliant upon the FDI because it's a smaller, it's a much larger proportion of their overall GDP size. Whereas a country like China, it really is it's small, small beer to them in that respect. So that's that's that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, when you're mentioning FDI, this is a sort of shout out here, it's a tutor to you in this respect. Um, can I refer you to, if you search for Tutor to You Globalization Webinar, that will take you to, ladies and gents, uh, that will take you to this YouTube video. And at 9 minutes 35 seconds on this YouTube video, you'll get a slide, and Jeff Riley, I believe it is, talking behind this slide, maybe Jim, I'm not sure, but they're talking about alternative examples of FDI into the UK economy because the example they are sick to the back teeth really I would say of getting examples of Nissan in Sunderland even though it's just a few miles down the road from where I'm talking to you but there are other examples and feel free to, to use those so Siemens plant in Hull Axo Nobel in Ashington again that's close to us here in the northeast uh, the Cummins Power Station investment in Ramsgate. So there are others. Don't just think, oh well, here we're talking about uh, FDI. Let's just use that well-worn example of Nissan. Watashi wo namai Nissan, ladies and gentlemen. So bear that in mind. That's just to you know, that'll keep the examiner happy that they're not reading about Nissan all the time. So figure 12, we're looking at calculating net flows. We want to see what, in the grand scheme of things, how important is it to them relative to their overall GDP size? Um, consider reasons why some of these countries might be attracting such huge inflows of capital relative to others. So why is it that these economies um, are attracting the, the values of FDI that they are? So, this is an occasion, ladies and gentlemen, where you can then try to link this back into some of your previous data. So, for example, is the UK, um, uh, is the United States, for example, are they achieving and are they attracting these FDI flows because of their productivity, for example, which is mentioned in some of the previous extracts? So try, where possible, to link this in to other areas. What about Australia? Are they attracting this FDI because foreign mining companies see the very um, abundant resource of iron ore, as was the case in, in Australia, or coal? And is it the case that they're investing into this economy because they are rich in natural resources? So try, try and link this, where possible, to previous figures. Okay, and then that then, ladies and gentlemen, brings us on to figure uh, 13, where we're talking about multinational corporations. Now, a couple of things I think you could do just to help yourself here with regard to multinational corporations. I have uh, been, I've put this together for my group, and we've been looking at a book by Joseph Stiglitz, well, no, I'm sure, the eminent economist, Mr. Joseph Stiglitz, I'll move this down a bit. And his book is called Making Globalization Work. Now, this is available online, you don't even have to buy it, if you just search Making Globalization uh, Work by Joseph Stiglitz, it will take you to this particular PDF file. And this PDF file is the, the entire book. Now, if you then go to chapter 7 of this book, have a read of it, and then maybe consider these questions. I think these questions, and having answers to these questions, would really help you in building an answer to the essay question. That, and remember, the essay question is the heavyweight question here. Building an answer to this heavyweight question with regard to FDI, globalization, and multinational corporations. And also although this is uh, a longer video, if you search YouTube for Walmart, colon, the high cost of low prices, again, there's another video there which talks about the way in which Walmart, multinational corporation, um, 
the benefits, but more focusing on the costs of that. So there's a couple of things, a couple of resources that you can be using and looking at in your revision time to help flesh out the skeleton of the answer. And really, you're provided in the extract with the skeleton of the answer because it already gives you the pros and the cons. Normally, these are the things that we as a group have to think about and come up with a list like this ourselves. So really, your job is to assess all of this and then to come to some um, reasoned conclusion at the end of it. So you've been given a lot of help here by the exam board, uh, should this turn out to be the final essay question, which um, I'm pretty confident that it will be. So as I say here, I think figure 13 really does speak for itself. Do a little bit of wider reading, wider watching around it, and you should uh, be able to put something together which is really rather tip-top for this. Okay, ladies and gents, that is it. That is figures 1 through 13 done. Um, let me take this opportunity to thank you for watching. Keep subscribing. And if you have any questions on the other two papers, 591 592, by all means do uh, drop me a line and I will do my very best to, to answer them and to get back to you. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen, and that concludes this playlist on the GCSE 593 paper for June 2017. Very best wishes, best of luck, bye for now.